Hello everyone, today we are going to start uh, modding the Fidu Q1S. Uh, we are going to replace the controller, the battery uh, and a few more other things. So we have the new controller here, we have a new combination switch, we have a Bluetooth module for the controller so we can change the parameters and program it. We have a new and compatible display with throttle, also a key lock to enable disable the controller for more safety. To start installing those, first we need to take out the old controller and the battery. The controller and the batteries are under the seat here and this has screws underneath so we need to take that off first. Then we need to strip the old electronics such as the switches, old throttle, uh, we are going to keep the brake levers uh, and we'll see about the other thing but the brake levers because they have sensors for the controller to turn off the motor are going to stay on. And with uh, the seat taken off we can take uh, the controller out. Be sure to remember the wires and also uh, for the battery ones to isolate them so the battery that is inside there should not short circuit while you remove it. Also some of the wires you can label them and I strip the pins because on the new controller uh, the new controller although it's uh, very nice and has very nice features it has almost no documentation it only provides a kind of pin out that says uh, uh, something like uh, uh, red is uh, power but this is not power because power goes in here uh, and it says here something like uh, negative, uh, positive and uh, signal but what kind of signal so it's kind of a guesswork uh, I'm not uh, happy with that at all although I have kind of figured them out and I'm going to try to include you some kind of schematic a, p a real pinout for this so I'm going to tell you which uh, plug goes where and this controller has some particularities and this was bought together with the throttle to be compatible and uh, you see here there were some plugs included here also but none of the plugs actually match the controller so it's kind of uh, be sure to get the right pin into one of these plugs and one into these plugs and one into the other plug and so on to make it work although as I've told you they were kind of a kit so this controller works with this display uh, but none of the uh, plugs here matched but I managed to find which pin goes where so this will have full functionality uh, the proprietary thing about this display is that uh, it has a special uh, signal for, from the controller it uses a phase signal to detect the speed so it kind of has different wiring from the standard ones and the standard uh, displays so it was a bit tricky but with the schematic you are going to be able to install that. The only good thing is that the whole sensor wire plug matches the one from the Fido bike here. They match, they, they match the colors and the face. So the default settings from the controller and the pinout of the wiring and the plugs match and the motor will work right out of the box with this controller without any kind of other trickery. Then also the Bluetooth model fits this plug so at least that works the um, rather complicated ones so here you need to find ignition you have to find key lock you have to find low brake or high brake depending on your uh, bike uh, and uh, a few things such as display power display speed throttle and uh, locking key so with those uh, you basically have 99.9 .9 functionality while the other plugs here offer some other things such as uh, uh, reversing uh, manual cruise control a uh, few other functionalities but you can also program those uh, with the controller here so you can set up automatic cruise control so you don't actually need to use all those wires same for uh, speed limit, you have here a wire for speed limiting, you can uh, speed limit this with your uh, Bluetooth app so you don't need that wire. So basically you only need brakes and throttle display and a few things like that and of course the whole sensor here. 
To further continue taking this apart, you need to remove the charge plug. The charge plug has a plug here that connects to the battery charge port. It has some hot glue and this nut here. You take the nut out, you take the plug off, take the nut off the wire and then you are going to push this out and you are going to get this space here. This will allow the battery to slide out. But the battery has something that still keeps it in place, so uh, it's held up pretty good. Then, uh, to continue taking out the battery and uh, disassembling the battery uh, and the bike, you need to take these cables out. And you can remove them one by one from here and also they have some zip ties underneath. A thing that you are going to hate is the whole sensor plug because this one is too big to fit the hole there so you actually need to extract each of the pins from the plug take the cable out and then put the pins back you see inside there are some small clips that hold each pin in its place you need to push that with a screwdriver and gently pull out the plug on that way uh, you need to do that for all the pins and then put them back also you need to take some pictures or note the order and the colors for each pin where it's in also, it will be a bit complicated because they have a lot of hot glue between them. So you are going to struggle to take them one by one out and you can't pull them out all together. So you are going probably to swear at uh, this moment. To take out the battery, it's uh, rather tricky because at the factory they use uh, hot glue and they put hot glue between the battery and this uh, seat post stem so it will not uh, go out uh, if you pull the wires too hard you might uh, break them they did uh, try to do something so they added a bit of uh, duct tape here to transform this into kind of a handle so you can pull this out but they didn't think this uh, true because your hand will not enter there so you are not going to be able to pull from that so uh, it will not work that way and also this will not uh, hold a lot of force to take out the battery. Uh, my solution was actually to turn the bike upside down and to start to shake it and gently pull the wires. And then this uh, fell out and the battery slided and I was able to take it uh, off. The next step is to remove the handlebar uh, instruments here, the on off switch and button. So I can install the new ones, same goes for the old throttle and display. To take them off uh, easy, you need to take the handlebar uh, grip and to do that, uh, to make it easier, you can uh, actually loosen up the brake lever, take this a bit here, take this here, so you get a bit of space under this and you can use a small screwdriver and then use some uh, water and soap, soapy water, and then twist this and insert more water. So this will actually slide out, so you can take it out. Same goes for this part here. You can loosen up the brake lever, take the display a bit, and then you are going to have the space to take this uh, half grip out. Then you can slide the others. And with the grip out, now we can uh, slide out the old instruments. Also, we need to unzip the zip ties and uh, take off this uh, protective spiral so we can uh, take the wires out. We also need to remove the rear zip ties that uh, held the cables here and remove the back so we have access to the ports here so we can remove the internal wiring and uh, route the new wiring. The new instrument uh, switch uh, comes with the plugs removed so it has wires with uh, pins so I wrap them with some uh, duct tape and then I'm going to push it down uh, through this uh, hole and hopefully it will come out on the other side and I will be able to grab it with something it's going to be fun uh, you should also move the cables a bit when you are pushing it so it doesn't jam in uh, Otherwise you can also use something like a steel wire or something and then grab this cable and pull it out Or a nylon cable there are some specialized tools for doing that But if you have a bit of patience you will manage to do it this way also 
So the cable is right here and look at that. I managed to route it without using other kind of tools. So now I can install the combination switch on the handlebar. The same goes for the old throttle. Uh, I've been uh, able to actually pull this out with the including plug. So this one is saved and did the same duct tape trick on this one. So pushed the three plugs remaining here and then all the other pins that were taken out of the plugs are held up with duct tape, duct tape and I've been able to take this routed through the frame. Now I'm also going to replace the original headlamp with uh, the upgraded one. Uh, that's very easy to do because both they have brackets so I'm going to take this uh, screw off, the bracket will come out and then use the same screw to hold the bracket for the new light and that will fit right away. And now the cables are installed and I put the wrapping back and they go through the frame as they should. And all the wires are coming out here and here. I'm going to route them on this side so all of them will come together and will enter the center box here, the center bag, where the controller will be. And now I'm going to solder the wires from the sensor, brake sensor from the throttle and uh, so on to the controller wires because the plugs don't uh, match so soldering should be the best option for now. And the wiring is uh, mostly done so the important uh, cables are connected. I haven't connected the front uh, lamp and the signal horn uh, combination switch so that's not connected right now but the other sensors and uh, things are connected including the bluetooth module for the controller so i'm going to connect this and see if it will successfully power on if it's going to work or not okay so it made a small spark but nothing to worry about and here we have contact so everything was fine and now the throttle let's test it okay so this is not uh, calibrated so probably not uh, showing the true uh, speed But you can hear the motor that it has a really nice sound and it's definitely spinning faster than the old 25 km per hour as it uh, did previously. And because this is a hub motor with gears and a free wheel clutch inside, free, uh, free wheeling clutch, this doesn't put any kind of load on the bike when uh, you are coasting so that should be really interesting and now it's time to fit all in the, to the back to install the back back onto the bike uh, it's going to house the controller the battery and you see here it's going to use actually two batteries for a bigger discharge current uh, and a bigger uh, range and the build is now over uh, as you can see it came out pretty clean so I only have some wires going in to the back here and that's all all the batteries two batteries controller all the wires have been uh, tucked inside and there's nothing else here these are the charge cables using the routing of the original feed loop. and i have two charging plugs one in the place of the original one and the other using the left out space where the old cables were going into the frame the headlight was also installed and this thing is as powerful as the old controller, motor controller was. And the combination switch works really nice. Also with the indicators lighting up. And it's all tied in, into the main uh, key lock here. So light will not work without key. Actually everything electrical is switched on uh, through the key. So if I turn this off. It's going to turn off the lights as well and other accessories that you have installed on it. And last but not least, the most interesting part, the controller programming. Because this has a Bluetooth receiver inside, 
Bluetooth communicator, you don't need to adjust parameters using a display or buttons. You just open the provided app and this is going to connect to the controller, which is this one. To find it, you need to have not only Bluetooth enabled, but also location. And now it's going to connect to it. And that's the main display here. You are going to have a speedometer and you have some information about the battery voltage, the amps, temperature of the controller, hall sensor status and other things. And uh, the other things are not so important such as Navi and Discover, but myself is the most important one because you have here hidden the controller settings, which is actually the most important. And here you have a lot of things that you can adjust for this controller. And we are going to go quickly through them. So you have fast start, soft start, uh, the means of uh, motor acceleration. You have over speed on or off. You have uh, reverse. If you have a motor that can go reverse, uh, you can uh, have an option to reverse it. Uh, also, the controller has a jumper. So if you have a very heavy vehicle, uh, you can uh, set it up to go backwards. You have manual and automatic cruise control options. You can put a switch to press to engage cruise control or it will automatically turn on after a predefined uh, time. Then you have speed limit, which is of course removed. You have reverse speed limit when you're going backwards. You have EBS brake, which does not apply to this bike motor and I don't know if the controller supports it. Then you have limitation for current, like phase here is limited to 50% for this bike because I'm using the stock motor which was uh, kind of rated to 250 watts and now I'm going to pump up to 2000 watts in it. Uh, and then you have face angle for uh, whole sensors, you have the eco mode. This kind of reduces the initial uh, acceleration, so it draws less power from the battery, it increases range, protects the motor from overload. Then you have other things such as mapping the accelerator curve, so when you twist the throttle, the bike can respond in different ways, faster, slower, uh, progressive. Also in the main interface you have here some buttons to switch from a uh, kilometer to miles, you can disconnect from Bluetooth and uh, change the language from English to Chinese, so not uh, many info there. Also uh, there is one more issue with uh, this, uh, let me reconnect. You cannot calibrate here the input voltage, it shows me 60% because the battery has now 53 volts, almost 54 volts, so it's full, it should be here 100%, but there's no option to adjust battery voltage, your nominal battery voltage, you can only adjust your low voltage cutout. So when you set here the voltage, which is uh, 44 volts right now, this one low voltage threshold, the controller is just going to stop and that's it. But uh, you don't have an option here to actually specify the battery voltage that you currently run. And as simple as that. That's how you install the new controller and upgrade the Q1S. As you can see here, the display shows something such as 32 km per hour. While on the display here, I get 71 km per hour, so nothing is to be lifted right now. We are going to see that in the following speed test. So be sure to follow my next video where I'm going to use the GPS and determine the top speed and if it uh, has worth all the upgrade and if the stock motor will uh, hold on to all those amps that's uh, going to try to destroy it. So until my next video, see you and bye bye.